Can you use your smartphone for legitimate street photography? Can you defer from or even completely replace your heavy, expensive mirrorless camera with the one that you always have on you? The short answer, yes. Let's talk about it. So this morning I'm out in downtown Austin taking photos only on my phone. And I want to talk about whether the camera that's always in your pocket is more than capable of producing print-worthy photos. You see, there are tons of videos out there of street photographers reviewing the newest smartphones and talking about how capable they are. But then in the next video, they go back to using their expensive mirrorless camera. This can be a little disheartening. If smartphones are so great, why don't they use them more often? I'm going to try to answer that today. Most everyone has a smartphone with a more than capable camera system on them at all times. And most everyone has taken photos on their phone before. So is everyone a photographer? Are all these photos from these Twitch shots print worthy? Well, no, we know the answer to that. But the reason isn't the camera, at least not entirely. On Ray Cartier, Brisson famously said that your first 10,000 photos are your work. Now this is great news for beginners. It means you should 100% start your photography journey on your smartphone and learn the skills that are most difficult to master, namely composition, lighting, and editing. If you can master these three skills on your smartphone, then you can use any other camera and produce great images. And after 10,000 smartphone photos, you'll have an extra skill that most street photographers these days don't have, shooting on a fixed lens camera and learning to move your feet. You see, the lack of interchangeable lenses may seem like a downfall of smartphones, and it may be a major factor in deciding to go mirrorless. But one of the most popular cameras in recent years, the X100B, is a fixed lens 35 millimeter camera. So what's the difference between that camera and a smartphone? Honestly, I find myself struggling to answer that. You see, I shoot auto on all of my cameras in 90% of the situations. I utilize back button focusing and exposure locking to get the look that I want, so I'm not dialing in my settings with every shot. And on most smartphone cameras, you can lock the focus and exposure in the native camera app producing essentially the same effect. So today I'm shooting on two different smartphones, the iPhone 15 Pro, which I'm filming on right now, and the Google Pixel 6 Pro. The reason for this is twofold. One, it's to show you that you don't need the newest smartphone camera to produce good images, as the Google Pixel 6 Pro is almost three years old at this point. And two, it doesn't matter what operating system you use. The camera in the phone is what's taking the picture, not the operating system. So just use whatever operating system you're comfortable with. So what are some pros and cons of doing street photography on your smartphone? I'm gonna start with the cons because I think that's what everybody thinks of when they think about shooting with their phone. The first is form factor. Smartphones are very thin bricks that don't have a lot to grip onto. When you're scrolling Instagram, they're great, but when you wanna hold the phone up and away from your body to take photos, I personally don't have a lot of confidence that I'm not gonna drop my phone. The second is lenses. Most smartphones have two or three lenses that have different focal lengths. But really there's only one lens on the camera that's actually worth a damn, and that's usually the wide angle main lens. And that wide angle is usually about 23 millimeters, which honestly is not my favorite focal length to shoot at. The third is post-processing. Smartphone manufacturers think that they know what you want your photo to look like, and so they utilize machine learning algorithms to post-process the photo into oblivion. Sometimes it looks okay, but it's never exactly what you want. And finally, fixed aperture. Smartphones don't have a variable aperture because there's no mechanical opening and closing of an aperture in the lens. What are the pros? One, you always have it on you. 
It's the only camera you never leave home without. Hell, it's probably the only camera that you actually take into the bathroom with you. Two, the workflow of photographing, editing, and posting is seamless. There's no other camera on the market that has a more seamless workflow than a smartphone. And the day when camera manufacturers install Lightroom and Instagram on cameras, it's gonna be a very dark day indeed. Third, the cameras are pretty decent. Sure, camera manufacturers are claiming more and more megapixels with the same sensor size, which means that those pixels are just getting smaller. But for what it is, it's decent. It's definitely print worthy. Hell, Sean Tucker did a video recently where he printed a photo from his smartphone on A2 and A3, and they came out pretty good. So I wanted to end this video with a couple of tips that I found useful when shooting on your smartphone. The first is shoot raw. Now this was difficult for me coming from a Fujifilm camera where I'm used to just editing the JPEG, but on smartphones, when you use the JPEG, that's where that post-processing of machine learning algorithms comes in, and it tries to balance the image, so you're losing a lot of contrast in your photos. So don't use JPEG, shoot raw. The second piece of advice is to get a grip. The one that I use is by Red Williams, this is G-Grip, which for what it is, it's pretty expensive. But I wanted something that wasn't bulky and actually felt like a real camera grip. I also wanted something that was more attached to my phone than with just MagSafe. Now there are thousands of styles of camera grips out there, so find whatever fits your needs and your budget. For me, that was just something that could be easily taken off and actually felt like a camera grip. The third is to learn your camera app. For me, that's the native camera app. But whatever camera app you use, be sure that you understand all of its functionalities. That way you know how to lock exposure and focus and know where the exposure compensation dial is and all those things that'll make shooting a lot faster and easier for you. Links to useful resources and videos are down below, as well as links to my website, Darkroom and Blog. I hope this video was informative, if not entertaining. And as always, thanks for watching. Happy shooting, and I'll see you next time.